Hi, I'm Sean, and today we're going to be talking about MicroROS. Before we get started, you should first familiarize yourself with both Arduino code or general C or C++ firmware writing, and ROS2 publishers and subscribers. So, what is MicroROS? To understand MicroROS, first you're going to want to consider the pipeline going from the computer to the microcontroller to your robot's actuator. So oftentimes the computer talks to the microcontroller over serial communication, usually through your USB cable or something like that, and the microcontroller talks to the actuator through a variety of different signals, usually lower level. So how might the computer talk to our actuator system? One way you could approach this is by creating a custom boilerplate interface or driver program to talk between your computer and microcontroller. So your microcontroller would talk to your computer over some kind of protocol over serial, and you would need some kind of ROS node or program on your computer that translates those serial communications into your ROS network. Of course, it's a lot of work to write interfaces for every single thing that you're going to plug into your robot. So MicroROS addresses that issue by actually having the microcontroller itself provide the ROS node. So you don't have to create custom publishers and subscribers for the data you're getting from the microcontroller. Instead, the microcontroller itself contains the code for publishing and subscribing. So simply put, MicroROS provides a ROS2 node at a low level using DDS for microcontrollers. What's DDS? DDS is the data distribution service. This is the low level uh, data bus um, that ROS2 itself uses to communicate between programs. ROS1 had its own data distribution bus, but that was specific and custom to ROS1. Um, as a result, the ROS2 um, C++ interface or library is very similar to the micro ROS library itself. So oftentimes you can get example code from the ROS2 C++ examples and with a little bit of tweaking, get it to work on a microcontroller using MicroROS. Um, for MicroROS to work, you do need a MicroROS agent active on the host machine, so you'll have to install that and then um, run that program for MicroROS to actually be uh, communicated between your microcontroller and your computer. Um, but again, this provides some low-level ROS2 integration on the microcontroller itself. For those of you who used ROS1, this is very similar to ROS Serial, but uh, ROS1 was more custom to ROS with a bridge converting ROS Serial to ROS instead of having that low-level DDS integration. Um, so one, um, one difficulty with micro ROS is that you actually do need higher grade hardware than ROS Serial. Um, so with ROS Serial, you could use like Arduino Unos and stuff like that, but with MicroROS, you're going to have to use like at least a DUA. So let's get into some examples of what runs MicroROS. I did rip these straight from their website, uh, but the first example I'm going to go over is PyPico, uh, which is created by the Raspberry Pi company. Um, this one is probably one of the cheapest options, um, around $5 last time I checked. It does support the Arduino IDE, but it does not support MicroROS Arduino as of today. So if you want to use this uh, microcontroller with MicroROS, you're going to have to use the PyPico SDK, which resembles more of your traditional microcontroller programming experience where you compile your code and then drag and drop it over into your device. Next up is the Teensy 4.0 or 4.1, whichever you prefer. Uh, this is what I would consider the preferred option for coding with the Arduino IDE. You just have to get that Teensy uh, library installed for the Arduino IDE and you're good to go. So more of the affordable Arduino options or the older Arduino options aren't officially supported by uh, MicroROS, but the Arduino Duet is community supported. We've used it in our organization a couple times and it's a good one to start with if you have a few lying around. Now, one thing to note is that you actually do have to install a patch manually into your Arduino IDE folder um, in order for this to work. So that those details are on the GitHub for uh, MicroROS Arduino. 
And of course, there's a good number of other options as well. They're available on the Micro Ross website, and that will be your most up-to-date source for what is officially supported by Micro Ross. So, some quirks with Micro Ross. So, Micro Ross runs on a dedicated serial connection. So that means that while Micro Ross is connected, you can't use that same serial connection to debug via serial.print serial line, uh, which is a very common way of debugging microcontrollers. Um, so it's possible to get around this while using uh, multiple serial connections. So I haven't tried this, but you could have one dedicated to your serial.print line and then another dedicated to your, uh, your Micro Ross connection. Uh, you can also create a publisher for debugging too, but that might be problematic if your Micro Ross itself is what you're trying to debug and you can't get it to publish or subscribe. Um, another issue is that the device ID on the Linux side is not always the same. It kind of depends on how you plug things in. Um, but you can get around this by setting static device IDs, uh, but I won't get into that. And then some microcontrollers reset on finding a new serial connection. So if you have firmware that initializes, say like you're calibrating the controller before it actually connects to micro ROS, then as soon as it connects to micro ROS, your microcontroller will reboot and you'll have to like recalibrate or do your, re your initialization procedure again after it connects to micro ROS, uh, which can be jarring if you don't know what's going on. Um, this can also be worked around with depending on the hardware, like you can set up like capacitors between pins and things like that to get around this. So next we'll just walk through some examples on the GitHub repository for micro ROS Arduino. I won't be getting into the Pi Pico, but that shouldn't be all that different. Um, but you'll have to know your way around compiling C++ code on your own rather than just hitting the Arduino IDE's uh, compile and upload button. All right, so here we are on the Micro Ross Arduino GitHub repository. This is the place to go um, for all of your Micro Ross Arduino needs. So about the um, patch you need for um, the Arduino, and actually this also applies to the Teensy, um, you can actually find links to those down here. So uh, you have to follow these instructions and uh, just patch that code to make make the uh, micro ROS work for those specific microcontrollers. Um, but yeah, let's get into the examples. So the best, the way I learned was I looked at the examples and then I clicked and dragged or, you know, copied and pasted what works um, over into um, my code. And you know, there was a lot of trial and error involved, but I think that's probably the <laughs> probably unavoidable for this um, considering it's a lot of uh, a lot of debugging both on the software and hardware side of things uh, but we'll, first we'll go into the publisher.ino here so you've got some necessary imports here micro ROS Arduino of course and then uh, standard IO and then these are uh, um, RCL so like ROS uh, C library um, imports and then here is actually an import of your uh, ROS2 message type, so here's int32. And then you see we're, um, we're creating a publisher, a message of that message type, an executor, support allocator, no timer. Um, so timer is actually not necessary for publishing. This is just what they're using to time the, um, time the publishing. You've got a timer callback here, so just your typical like ROS2 callback function. Uh, you got your setup, so you got set micro ROS transports, um, create an allocator, uh, some supporter functions, uh, and then this, of course, is where you're actually creating the publisher itself. So you got you're um, referencing the publisher, the, um, you're referencing the node, creating a message type. And then this is actually the name of your publisher. Here is the name of the node. And this is actually just a timer that um, that calls this callback to actually publish uh, publish the message here. And you can see that it's just incrementing uh, the number 
over time and just publishing that newly incremented number. Uh, and of course you need to create an executor. So this number here actually defines the number of executors you've got going on. So in this case, it's one for timer. Uh, you'll need one for every single, um, every single subscriber you add. Um, one thing to note, a lot of the microcontrollers have limitations on how many publishers and subscribers you can have by default. Um, this is due to memory limitations, so be aware of that. Um, so when you're doing, uh, when you're coding microROS for like an Arduino Due, you might find that once you add like five subscribers, weird things start happening. Like uh, it'll start connecting to your microROS agent, and then it'll start destroying all the entities, and it'll just get into a loop of creating and destroying microROS entities, which uh, is evident of some kind of issue going on with a microcontroller. Um, but again, the best way to learn this is actually just running it on your microcontroller itself. Uh, I can only do so much just by looking over this code. I can take a look at a subscriber. So similar deal here. Um, we've got some helper functions here for uh, for errors. And same deal, setups, one executor for one subscriber. And you've got your subscription to callback as usual. So if you're not sure what one of these functions does, I would usually just Google it, find the GitHub repository, and uh, you can find exactly what's expected in that um, in that function header, like topic name, type support, node, description. And again, a lot of this stuff is very similar to the C++ interface, so you can use uh, you can use resources from that as well to get a better understanding of how this all works. Um, ROS C++ is one of the uh, standard um, standard ROS2 programming libraries. But um, in this case, we're mainly just going over publishers and subscribers. Um, a lot of what I said about the similarities between ROS C++ and this, um, or ROS2 C++ and this, uh, applies for any other um, ROS2 uh, communication methods, so not just publishers and subscribers, but um, services and things like that as well. So... Yeah, it's a developing library. Um, Ross, Micro Ross Humble is out right now. Um, and best of luck on your microcontroller firmware writing journey. Hopefully not too much debugging, but there always is some debugging.